that is a, a dreadful pity, and I'll tell you a story that that I nearly swore cars done that to me before in a leopard sighting with those three leopards and a vehicle full of guests before. Anyway, don't worry, it will be sorted out and it will not in any shape, way or form chase those leopards away. It's happened to me before. I don't know why it happens. Anyway, uh, don't worry. It did chase the guests away, which I suppose could have been thought of as a positive. Here, while we wait for Jamie to sort out her vehicle issues, is the lava of a monarch butterfly. Now, many of you have heard of the monarch butterfly in North America, and it's got a most magnificent story. And I think it's the most romantic story in all the insect world. What happens is that in North America, they breed up in Canada, and then they fly clean across the continental United States into Mexico. And you know, no butterfly that takes off in Canada ever actually makes it to Mexico. Let me say that again. No butterfly that takes off in Canada makes it to Mexico. They breed on the way. And so the butterflies arriving in Mexico are the grandchildren of the ones that left. Isn't that amazing? So no butterfly ever makes that astonishing migration of insects across the continental United States. Now, these ones do not, in fact, migrate. It will look very similar to a North American monarch butterfly when it pupates. And these warning colors much like that Gloriosa Superba that Steph would look, was looking at, tell birds and us that this is not for eating. Now, if you were in any doubt, all you would have to do is to look at the plant that it's eating. I have, it's not actually growing in here. I put it in here. Uh, it, I found it just next to the tent, but it's quite nice hanging here. And you can see little bits of white. And that white stuff is milky latex. Oh, the disgusting milky latex. It's highly, highly toxic. And that's the story of the monarch butterfly there. Okay.